Football. It is Thursday, December 28th. Kay Adams here. This is April Wilson and Peter Schrager. And Kyle Bland. And this is the lovely city of New York. Uh, what's on the back of those back pages? Unmentionables, Kay. Really? Yeah, there's some wordplay with Eli Apple that I really don't even want to show to our screen, okay. but it has to do with him in the restroom. And the, the uh, New York Post really went all out on this one. They, they won the day over the Daily News. Sorry. One more week in the regular season. Lots to talk about here in New York City and really all across the league. <laughs> 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 he looks at it slowly and then just goes to his lap. I mean, this is pretty good, but that one's not Apple too. is a gift in the pun world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty and simple. And when you say you're doing something else and why you couldn't talk to the media, it yeah. just works really well. Yeah. Should I hold it up now? Right. I don't know. Hashtag GMFB. Time for the... For the lead block. All right. I can't believe we've almost reached the finish line of the 2017 NFL season. Uh, there is still a lot to play for, though, especially in the AFC wildcard chase. you got four teams, right? you got your Ravens, you got your Titans, Chargers, and the Bills in the AFC. But let's focus on... Are we do, yeah, let's focus on the Raiders, Chargers, Bengals, Ravens here. Okay. Two games with a lot of implications. So what is one thing that we are looking for in that set of games? Who wants to go first? I'll go. I'm going to get everybody fired up at the top of this hour and talk, talk to Joe me. Flacco and the Ravens. Now, when I was uh, in college, they would have the media guide come out, and for each player that had the, did you know, strange fact about them. Like, did you know this person was a Patriots are better? Yeah, but Flacco is just not playing that well this year. Fake news, sad. Did you know <laughs> that over the past month he has seven touchdowns and one interception? His lower back wow. was kind of banged up early in the year. He's feeling healthier. He's playing better. And there is this factor coming out of them that they're kind of the boogeyman. They're talking about, too. Eric Weddle says, if we get in, we're a team to be reckoned with. T-Sizzle. Everybody knows that in the second season, we're a different team. Everybody knows they have defense. They have metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. -E. Yeah. They have a great, we're not impressed with you factor. One of the best in the leagues. And I think they're going to knock somebody off. And when I say knock I'm not talking about the Jags or the Titans or the Chiefs or the Bills. I'm talking about one of the big dogs. I'm talking about the Steelers or the Patriots. I think they're one of the scariest teams in the entire field because they don't care about you and they know how to take care of business. The Ravens are playing very well. Don't talk about it. Watch out. I thought mm. you didn't want to talk about them. I don't. They're don't. like the band <laughs> okay. before we blew up. This is the Weezer Blue album now. Now everybody knows about them. Ugh. Just keep it down a little bit because they're going to knock somebody off. Pinkerton and Bust. Mm. Uh, Shrey, what do they have to do to get in? They've got to get in the playoffs. And to do that, they've got to win this game against the Bengals and then they're in. Okay, but... Oh, that's it? That well, the, They can get in still as a 64 with a loss, but if the Bills, right, okay. beat the Dolphins right. and the Bengals beat the Ravens, it's the Bills going to the playoffs and not the Ravens. So anyway, we can get into all that. But for me, I'm looking at the other side of the ball. And I'm looking at the coaching staff of the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm not looking at Marvin Lewis, who might be coaching his last game after 15 years as a head coach. I'm looking at defensive coordinator Paul Gunther. And let me explain. You might not know Paul Gunther. There's Paul right there. It's his fourth season as Bengals defensive coordinator. And against Joe Flacco all time. Oh, yeah. He's 4-2. and two with Burleson to say this. Hey! You beat the Ravens in Baltimore and ruined their season, and you beat the Lions last week mm, and ruined their, their season. season. <laughs> you suddenly have a very good resume when you walk into the owner's interview and you say, yeah. hey, you're going to get rid of Martin Lewis or Marvin's leaving, whatever that is. Let's not break this up just yet. I am submitting my name because guess what? Just like you've seen Kyle Shanahan go to San Francisco and have great success, or Sean McVay go to L.A. and have great success, or all the different coordinators have gone elsewhere to find great success, Cincinnati Bengals might want to keep Paul Gunther around, not as their defensive coordinator, but as the head coach. This might be his statement game. This might be his exit interview. This might be the way he says, I don't need to come in and razzle-dazzle you with schemes and formations. Let me just show you the results. Our arch-rival Ravens need to win and get in. And we had nothing to play for, mm. and we beat them in their building. Paul Gunther's the guy that I'm watching. What's he going to dial up for that Ravens offense? A couple, ah. couple times this week you've mentioned the Gunther. Bengals and how well they played last week. What is it that you saw last because week that gives you confidence? That they, other than, I mean, you, those they lost to the Bears, crazy. right? They lost to the Bears. They got blown out by the Bears. Disgusting loss. Then they go and they play into Minnesota, and the story comes out that it's Marvin's last game.